مساء الخير على حضراتكم جميعا بداية بشكر الأستاذ دكتور مجدي الدهشان والدكتور محمد البري والدكتور أحمد ماهر على الدعوة الكريمة وتهنئة بالنجاح الباهر للمؤتمر. بليز ليت مي توك إن ذا نيكست فيو مينتس أباوت إنستاينال ليمفوما. Lymphoma in general is classified into Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma is classified into extranodal and nodal lymphoma. So uh, uh, primary GI lymphoma represent 30 to 45 percent of extranodal non-Hodgkin lymphoma. If you look at the small bowel cancer, uh, lymphoma represents the least common type of uh, small bowel cancer after sarcoma, chest tumors, adenocarcinoma, and in uh, neuroendocrine. Uh, looking at this uh, uh, graph, this figure, uh, uh, the uh, small incisional lymphoma represent 20 to 30 percent of total GI lymphoma, following stomach lymphoma, which represent 65 percent of total GI lymphoma uh, prevalence. So what are risk factors for intestinal lymphoma? Helicobacter pylori infection comes first, then celiac disease, immunodeficiency syndrome, and solid uh, organ transplantation, inflammatory bowel disease, viral infections, including mainly Epstein Barr virus, followed by HIV chronic hepatitis. Uh, when to suspect lymphoma based on clinical manifestation when the patient uh, has abdominal pain, diarrhea, bleeding, and loss of weight, and sometimes those complications, including intestinal obstruction and perforation. Uh, work up of intestinal lymphoma include laboratory endoscopic and radiological investigations. Laboratory investigations mainly include CBC with anemia is highly prevalent, elevated liver enzymes mainly in infiltration and cholestasis, in some cases of uh, obstruction of uh, combined duct. Uh, lactic dehydrogenase and beta-2 microglobulins are increased in case of lymphoma but not specific. Carcinoembryonic antigen uh, stool antigen for H. pylori is uh, ordered in cases suspected to be related to H. pylori infections like maltoma and H. pylori related lymphoma. Uh, imaging studies include at first plain abdominal X-ray film which reveal partial or complete small bowel obstructions in many cases. A small bowel follow-through uh, showing abnormalities in 53 to 83% of patients with a small bowel cancer. We order abdominal and CT scan for many reasons, indicating the site of the tumor, extent of local disease, and sometimes the presence of metastasis anywhere, including the liver. Uh, uh, MRI enterography is used uh, to detect and localize the site of the tumor in the small intestine. A uh, PET scan is used mainly for staging of the disease. So endoscopic examination uh, in cases of suspected lymphoma include upper GI endoscopy with small bowel enteroscopy, which is Foch enteroscopy type, that may identify and allow biopsy of lesions in the duodenum and jejunum. Colonoscopy with retrograde ileoscopy may be useful in identifying ileal tumors. Uh, and video capsule endoscopy has <coughs> a false negative results in about 19% of patients with uh, tumors, but used anyway. Double balloon enteroscopy should still be performed in patients with a high clinical suspicion of small intestinal lesions, following a negative uh, capsule endoscopy result, allowing a deeper intubation of the small intestine. Endoscopic ultrasound used mainly for local staging of the disease. One of important investigations is the flow cytometry of biopsy tissue or bone marrow. And for B cell lymphoma types, an immunohistochemistry panel includes CD20, CD3, CD5, CD10, BCL2, BCL6, and so, and without markers of Kappa lambda, including CD19, CD20, CD5, CD23, and CD10. For T-cell lymphoma, the panel may include CD20, CD3, CD10, BCL6, KI67, and without uh, Kappa lambda, CD45, CD3, CD5, CD, and CD19, and other uh, markers. And for staging of the disease, the TNM classification still used in the, um, uh, for uh, tumor localization uh, for lymph node metastasis and for distal metastasis. 
and staging is from stage zero through stage five before treatment. Uh, and this is a picture of double balloon enteroscopy showing diffuse fine granularity and the edematous mucosa with circumferential shallow ulceration on the ilium and fine granular elevation with sand like mucosa in the mid to distal jejunum. If you look at this CT picture, this uh, CT with contrast showing a uh, diffuse and localized thickening in parts of the small intestine. And here, the MR enterography is uh, showing presence of circumferential stenosis uh, seen at the RO site in small intestinal lymphoma lesion. So, uh, primary lymphoma in the intestine, uh, small intestine is the second most common site affected by primary GI lymphoma, accounting for 20 to 30 percent of GI lymphomas, more common in the alien than the jejunum. There are various subtypes of small intestinal lymphoma, such as multi lymphoma, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma, follicular lymphoma, and intestinal T cell lymphoma. Intestinal T cell lymphoma constitutes 10 to 20 percent of all primary lymphomas and more common in Asian than in Western population. Follicular lymphoma is a low grade B cell lymphoma. It's the second portion of duodenum is the most common, is the most common site of involvement, followed by adrogenum and alien. And the lesions are usually incidentally detected during endoscopy and include uh, mucosal polyps or irregular mucosal nodules. Immunophenotyping shows CD20 positive lymphoma, negative for CD5, CD43, and cyclin D1. And the uh, diffuse follicular lymphoma is associated with excellent prognosis showing a very good five years overall survival. So a watch and wait approach is appropriate for the treatment of fo focal lymphoma. Intestinal T cell lymphoma, there are two subtypes according to WHO classification system. Type 1 extra nodal natural killer cell lymphoma closely linked to Epstein Barr virus and of three types nasal, non nasal, and aggressive. Type 2 enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma divided into two types. Type 1 is associated with celiac disease and is more prevalent in Western countries, while type 2 has no relation with celiac disease. Symptoms of intestinal T cell lymphoma include fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, bloody stool, weight loss. Acute perforation and massive hematochesia are severe complications and are more common in intestinal T cell lymphoma than in primary intestinal B cell lymphoma, which need emergency operation. Capsule endoscopy and colonoscopy are most commonly used in detection and diagnosis of enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma, with focal ulceration being the most frequent endoscopic feature. Endoscopic features of intestinal T cell lymphoma is similar to those of Crohn's disease in spinal TB and adeno adenocarcinoma and should be differentiated from these lesions. On CT examination, the classic pattern of intestinal T cell lymphoma include bowel wall thickening, mucosal ulceration, and neurosmal dilatation, and even perforation. The incidence of perforation is higher in intestinal T cell lymphoma than in B cell lymphomas. So, enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma uh, strongly associated with celiac disease. Symptomatology is non specific and similar to that of celiac disease, including weight loss, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort. Lack of response to gluten gluten free diet, refractory celiac disease is also seen in some cases. Immunophenotyping shows new. Neoplastic lymphoid cells expressing CD3, CD7, CD103, and typically negative for CD5, CD4, CD8, and CD56. Monomorphic epitheliotropic T cell lymphoma, formerly designated, designated as EATL type 2, in contrast to EATL, there is no clear association with celiac disease. The disease shows a higher prevalence among Asian and Hispanic populations. Clinical manifestations are non-specific and they include weight loss, abdominal pain, diarrhea, perforation, and obstruction. Microscopic examination shows diffuse transmural lymphoid uh, tissue infiltrate with accompanying uh, mucosal ulceration. Immunophenotypically, the neoplastic lymphoid cells are positive for CD3, CD8, CD56, and 
negative for CD5. So indolent T cell, uh, T cell lymph, lymphoprotein disorder of GIT involves the mucosa of any portion of GIT tract, but most commonly encountered in small and large intestine, clinically present with chronic nonspecific symptoms such as weight loss, abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. Endoscopic findings include mucosal sickening, hypremia, polyboid lesions, and superficial erosion. And the microscopically lamina propria is expanded by small lymphocytes with monotonous appearance on immunophenotypings and neoplastic lymphoid cells are positive for mature T cell markers, including CD3, CD2, CD5, CD7, negative for CD56, CD103. In sinus uh, T cell lymphoma, not otherwise specified, including uh, neoplasms that are typically follow aggressive clinical course, including widespread disease at presentation. So malignant lymphoma of the large intestine. Lymphomas involving the large intestine are uncommon, accounting for 10 to 20 percent of GIT lymphomas and 0.2 percent of all colorectal malignancy. The majority of cases are of B-cell type. Colorectal T-cell lymphoma are rare. Prevalence of involvement includes the cecum 57 percent and the least part is the descending colon 5 percent. Distal colonic rectal and anal involvement are more commonly encountered in patients with HIV-related immunodeficiency. The most common lymphoma subtype presents in the large intestine are MAC lymphoma, MCL, DLBCL, Perkins lymphoma, and the EBV-related lymphoma. Uh, the clinical presentation of colorectal lymphoma is variable and non-specific and they include abdominal pain, rectal bleeding, diarrhea, and the presence of abdominal mass forming lesions. Lymphoma associated with inflammatory bowel disease is controversial. Some studies describe a small but significant increase in the risk of lymphoma related to therapy with immunomodulators and anti-tumor necrosis factor agents. Endoscopically, the neoplasm may present as solid lesions with ulcerations similar to colorectal carcinoma or with polyposis, what we call lymphomatous polyposis. In this table, there is a comparison between a small uh, intestinal and colonic lymphoma, and we don't have time to, to describe all these differences. And treatment of intestinal lymphoma. For uh, follicular lymphoma and MCT, chemotherapy is a choice. And surgery is reserved for complications with overall five survival rate ranging from 30 to 45 percent of cases. So diffuse large B cell lymphoma and maltoma. In a stage one of low grade, surgical resection with a 10 centimeter safety margin is the treatment of a choice. In a stage two and above, and all high grades, chemotherapy with shock with or without rituximab is used. Then surgery is used for complications and bulky tumors to prevent perforations after chemotherapy. In case of H. pylori uh, related lymphomas, H. pylori indication is uh, indicated. Treatment of colorectal carcinoma in colonic type, stage one surgery is the treatment of, of a choice, stage two surgery plus adjuvant chemotherapy, stage three and four chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. In cases of rectal carcinoma, surgery uh, uh, followed by chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. And thank you.